We are all here today because we are partners united by this focus on people-centric technologies aimed at making the world a better place. Our world starts with our employees and our customers to create a ripple effect, scaling empathy to everyone that our businesses touch. I am Bridget McAdoo, the Chief Sustainability Officer here at Genesis. Joining me today, I have John Hernandez, our Executive Vice President and General Manager of Genesis Multi-Cloud, Dr. Drew Foistel, He's a PhD in geophysics uh, with work experience in oil and gas and an astronaut. And Mattia Peretti, customer engineering manager with Google Cloud. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. Let's start with the first question. What does the business of human impact mean to you personally? And how does it relate to the roles that you have? Well, uh, I think technology has always been with me. Uh, I remember when I was a kid, my father used to tell me to tell me that uh, I started typing on a keyboard before holding a pen. So it was clear that my career was going to be in technology. And here I am, I'm a customer engineering manager, and what I do is basically I lead a team of uh, customer engineers. What are customer engineers? Are engineers that are working with customers. So technology and people. Uh, what they do is something that is super important. They help customers implement our solutions to solve their business problem. And the key trait of uh, this role is that you need to be a trusted advisor. So you need to be an advisor, so that gives advice to customer, but you need to be trusted by customers. So as you can see, advising and being trust are like uh, probably the one of the most fundamental uh, feeling of being human. So technology is super important. It will always be super important. But technology is at service of humans. And it will always be like that. So that's the way I see it. I like that technology is at service. True. Having had a unique perspective of the planet and, and looking down to see that uh, you know, the only place that humans exist are here on Earth and, and all living species that we know of are currently on this planet. And so I think what's important is to realize is for all of us to realize that uh, it's the context uh, that we live in, that sustainability is important and that everything we do really needs to be um, not focused as much maybe in the past as it has, it has been on the bottom line and profitability, but the ability you know, to sustain those capabilities and sustain that work. And that means taking care of the world that we live in and everything that we do, not just you know, by recycling, but thinking about things folks do for business and in their everyday life. You know, it's really important that we uh, we think about the long the long term goals that we have, which is continuing life as we know it. Sure, I get to follow the astronaut. <laughs> yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know, tying those together from from my perspective as well, a human element is a is a big part of it. Sustainability also absolutely ties into is the importance of the planet. As I think about my kids and eventually their kids. But you know, in, in my role, I lead a global engineering team. So we're dispersed all over the planet, India, Europe, US, parts of Asia. And so, you know, making them feel as a cohesive team through technology and collaboration and, and what we work on every single day and centering that on customers. And, you know, a big part of, of COVID was everybody working from home. And so including the massive population of, of, uh, of call center agents that had to move from home. And th these folks typically went into an office every single day and had f you know, fixed shifts that they would be a part of. And so the industry had to flip upside down very quickly to let people work from home. How are you gonna manage them? What's the technology look like? Do you move to the cloud? Um, but that ultimately had a huge impact on the planet. Think about all those cars off the road now, not commuting to work. Um, and if you tie that into the consumers that we're supporting with our technology, I don't have to go to the bank anymore. I don't have to go to the grocery store anymore. I could do things over the internet. And so there's a big tie into that, but it really centers for, for me uh, around uh, our employees and our customers and the humans that are in the middle of that interaction. All right, let's discuss this notion of using technology to predict human impact. I know at Genesis, we call this predicting the next best action via experience orchestration, as you've already talked about, John. So can you talk a little bit more about how we do it at Genesis? Yeah, you know, at, at the heart of it, it really is around that orchestration layer. And, and when we talk about that, it is, it's matching up the consumer or business customer um, along with the employee 
in the uh, in the company that that is serving that consumer. And and it starts up at the beginning with self service tools and AI capabilities like voice and chat bots, all the digital channels at their disposal. As consumers, we all just want to service ourselves. We don't necessarily want to talk to somebody if we don't have to. We want to just get serviced and move on with the rest of our day. And so when we think about that capability up front, it's very important that that be predictive and it also be orchestrated to the point where it, it it's the ability to understand what the customer is looking for and preempt it before they need to pick up the phone or send in an email. But on the other side of it, it's also orchestrating all the employees. Um, if you get the wrong person inside of the company, you're calling about consumer checking and you get a mortgage advisor, well, there's a disconnect on that. So you got to really understand who the employees are that you're going to match up with these consumer inquiries coming in. And then, of course, at the end of the day, it's about understanding and analyzing so you can go back and and take advantage of some of those learnings. And so a lot of the technology that I mentioned earlier on the integrations between Google and Genesis is facilitating all of that to happen all the way to the edge with with these customers um, that are trying to get a hold of those brands and conduct business in some sort with them overall. Um, And so understanding what the friction points are in that um, through the analysis on the back end allows us to go and change that orchestration and just remove those hurdles and roadblocks that are hurting that immersive experience for those consumers coming in to the brands that use the joint technologies. Fantastic. And Mattia, I would love for you to talk about the evolution of AI with Google and how you use it to heighten the customer experience. Google aims at building very good uh, technology that can help and advance uh, uh, human experience and human lives. But we also believe that everyone has to do what they're good at. So that's why we partnered with uh, Genesis, because we believe that uh, in terms of customer experience, Genesis has incredible knowledge and expertise, and they're very good at understanding how contact center, customer center, customer experience is. On our side, we bring what we're good at, so in terms of machine learning. And uh, because we believe at the end that uh, a good customer experience uh, software, a a contact center solution should really help uh, both sides of the equation. So on one side, you have the business customer that they need to talk to contact center, they need to find their answer fast, that they have to be accurate, and uh, they want to get off the phone or whatever channels they're using as quick as possible. On the other side, there are the agents that are under time pressure, they have a lot of calls coming in, a lot of interaction to do, and uh, uh, this is something that we really need to help them doing. And we believe that with our machine learning technologies, through agent assist, through speech to text, text to speech, uh, natural language understanding, and all these kind of uh, machine learning uh, technologies embedded in specific vertical solution as Genesis has, we can really help customers and companies to achieve a better customer experience. Absolutely. Well, everyone on this panel has the power to use industry-leading technology to advance human understanding at every level. Let's discuss the future of AI as it relates relates to delivering personalized experiences. So, John, let's start with you. How do we use AI to deliver that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, data is the foundation of all of that. Without data, AI is not going to be accurate at all. And so the more data you can analyze to be prescriptive about um, you know, the outcome that's trying to be driven is, is very important. But at the same time, that data is private in many cases. And so being good stewards of that data is every corporation's mission, right? Regardless, of like, you know, GDPR in Europe or DORA coming in Europe now, other privacy type uh, compliance around the world is important to be a part of and adhere to, but even more so as a, as a corporate mandate, you need to make sure that you're protecting that data. But at the same time, leveraging it for folks that want you to be more proactive and prescriptive in the engagements with them. Yeah, absolutely. And Mattia, I would love for you if you could talk about how Google leverages data to fuel the future of machine learning. In order to do proper machine learning, you need data. Without data, there's no machine learning. But it's not enough. Because if you think like people, what they think about machine learning, probably the majority of people is like, okay, you have a lot of data. Then you have a very complex mathematica, mathematics in a multi-dimensional space. And then, voila, magic results. That's what people think. Data, mathematics, results. 
The reality is very different because the process in order to achieve real good machine learning is something else. It's something that starts, first of all, you need to define your objectives. Uh, because uh, a problem that uh, it's in one area or in one domain is completely different from another one. So if you don't have clear objectives, you're not going to go nowhere. Second, you need to collect the data. That's for sure. It's something that you need to do machine learning. Uh, but collecting the data is not enough. You need to clean them. You need to prepare them because you know maybe you know they are not the correct data. There is a lot of uh, uh, background noise in this data and stuff like that. Then you need to build the models because uh, machine learning is based on neural networks in terms of uh, technologies, and you need to build this model that really is focused to solving your specific problem. Then you need to iterate. Because probably you know the data are not completely correct, uh, or maybe the model was not uh, perfectly tuned, and then you need to do a lot of cycles and reiterate. Then when you validate your model, finally you put it in production. So yeah, to do machine learning, as I said, and as John said, we need uh, and everyone needs data, but it's just a tiny part of the recipe. Uh, you need to be very good also at all those other steps, otherwise you're not going to achieve much about it. So John, can you speak to the partnership of co-innovation and where it will take us next? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the, the, the engineering um, integration between Google and Genesis is stronger than it's ever been. Um, we've been working together for many years with many, many customers using our joint technologies. But what we recently, a few months ago, decided to explore was beyond just Google Cloud and CCAI, which are the things that you would think would be common in, in that integration is, um, Google brought to bear 30, 40 engineers from across all divisions of Google. Um, a lot of AI capabilities, Google business chat, but them sharing their technologies allowed us to work with them and say, you know, that has strong relevance in retail or financial services where we can bring that technology from Google to life in those environments that we know very well. And that centers all around the orchestration layer, like I was mentioning earlier. The other interesting thing we brought in uh, with Google is an acquisition we made recently called Pointalist. And, and Pointalist is a, is a journey analytics solution. And back to the data discussion, the more data it consumes, the more accurate it could be around areas in that orchestration for a, for a journey for a customer that might have some friction points. Like, might go to a dead end when they're going through an IVR or a telephone conversation, or, hey, there's this whole queue of, of email stacked up that nobody is responding to. And so, you know, in many cases, that pointillist application will crawl 60, 70 different data sources in a corporation. Mm -hmm. And the more data it gets, whether it's ERP or CRM or web traffic, e-commerce, social, call, all that data, it just helps pinpoint where it is. And then once we have that insight between Google and us and the machine learning and AI capabilities they have, we can start changing orchestration of those journeys in real time and self-correct a lot of the things that could be broken. Because if you imagine a large financial institution, their platform and configuration is going to be so vast because they have to take into account every potential interaction for every consumer and business banking customer they have, that's millions of different paths that somebody could go. So applying AI and machine learning on top of that with the data on top uh, or underneath it is going to be super critical to really fine tuning that orchestration. Uh, that's why we have this partnership with Genesis. It's because we, as Google, we want to provide those technology that actually allows customers to have a, a human-like experience. Mm -hmm. So like we have technology like speech to text. So you can talk with your own vocabulary, with your own accent, well, you know, my accent. Uh, you use your own terms, uh, and still the machine will be able to understand you. Then we give the machine with text-to-speech technology also the same kind of approach and the same kind of uh, thing, like translating their answer in a human voice. Like uh, John's father that was talking, I prefer to talk with someone. So of course we know that they're non-human beings, but still you have a, an experience that is closer to talk to a human being. And on the other side, the agents, they can be offloaded by like very mundane tasks, repetitive tasks, and they become more specialists. They can uh, actually deal with tougher calls. And even there, like uh, machine learning technology with document understanding, uh, sentiment analysis, and these kind of things, can help agent to be more effective with a real-time turn-by-turn guidance. 
So that's exactly what we're trying to do. So elevate uh, people's lives, both customers with like uh, quicker answers uh, and uh, better answers, but also with employees of companies, helping them to, you know, give more value to customers instead of doing like things that probably machine can do quicker. Post interaction, because, you know, we're not always going to get it right every single time, is having that analysis on the back end to really crawl the data and see how those journeys are happening. And did you get what you needed out of the interaction? Did you have to be moved from four different people before you got the answer that you needed? And identifying those trouble areas allow the system administrators to go back and between Google and us adjust that orchestration so the next time it's better. And the next time it's better. And it's constantly using that machine learning and orchestration to, to, to tighten that up to make it better and better. So you're yeah, saying don't give up. It's exactly <laughs> don't, yeah. don't give up so soon. But it's exactly what uh, also I was talking about before, you know, how actually machine learning is made. So this is the iteration part he was uh, saying, like new data that allows you to tune and tweak your model in a better way or because of changing uh, environment and uh, things that are happening. So this is an example. Let's move to how the star mapping machine learning technology is now being used to address critical issues across our ecosystem around animal extinction with data. Can you talk to us about that? Yeah, and it's you know that's publicly publicly available information about how uh, organizations in the space industry are using data collected, you know, satellite data that's collected. Uh, Earth observation data to understand what's happening on the planet, understand uh, vegetation patterns, understand changes in weather systems and where they affect different environments, uh, different regions around the, the world. And that inevitably then affects uh, species on the planet and their ability, different regions' ability to support those species based on uh, the vegetation and uh, you know the food that is there to, to keep them alive. So again, it's it comes back to the data, the ability of, of machines to learn to compress all that data, much more data than any single human or even team of humans could in any reasonable amount of time to be able to analyze and uh, compare the data, categ uh, categorize it, catalog it, and, and combine it into usable data sets to make informed answers uh, and informed decisions about um, understanding what's happening to the, to the climate and the planet around us. So, uh, it's critical in, in, in the space business and in Earth observation is really important as well because we have so many satellites in orbit now. Many of them are pointed back towards the Earth uh, for that very reason, not just weather patterns, but also just data, remote sensing data, understanding what's happening with the planet and, and the ways that it's changing. And that's that's the data that we can no longer ignore. And that's why sustainability and understanding our impact to the planet is so important. Fantastic. I want to thank each of you today for joining me on this journey to discuss the business of human impact. Thanks so much. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure.